Hi everyone, it's Dr. Omar Muhammad, an intern at Gamma Medical College, Calicut, and in today's video, I'll be discussing about the USMLE Step 2 CK examination. If you're new to this channel, do hit the subscribe button and follow me for more such content. Last week, I received my USMLE Step 2 CK results, and I'm happy to announce that I scored a really good score of 269. Which, if you are not aware of uh, about the USMLEs, it is a score at the 97th percentile. It's like a really, really good score, which uh, most people are aiming for. In this video, I'll be particularly discussing everything that you need to know about the USMLE Step 2 CK, how I prepared for it, my timeline, the resources that I used, how I felt about the resources, the test taking strategies, and finally about the examination day and how my exam went. So let's get started. If you're new to this uh, USMLE thing, you have to realize that USMLEs are examinations which are required to pursue your residency in the United States. It's a series of three examinations, namely the step one, step two, and step three. To pursue your residency in the United States, you have to compulsorily complete two steps, that is step one and step two CK. Step three examination, even though it is not compulsory to apply for residency, it is recommended to do before uh, applying for residency to increase your chances of matching. However, step three is an exam which you have to take before the end of your residency. But step one and step two are necessary requirements to apply or pursue your residency in the United States. Now, I started my USMLE journey uh, at the beginning of January and in fact, I prepared for both step one and step two together. I'll be uh, going more uh, into that details in another video. Coming particularly to my step two CK preparation, I started that in the month of February and I had basically three periods of preparation. So for the first three months, I completed the U world, which was my primary resource. And I would say that was like the uh, first interaction with the step two material. And then I spent around one month for the MBMEs and other material. And finally, I spent three weeks as my dedicated period. So that is basically my timeline. I started in February and by the end of May, I was done with U world. Then for the month of June, I focused on the NBMEs and finally for three weeks in July, I sat dedicated for my step two preparation. The crucial thing when it comes to resources about step two CK preparation is that unlike other exams and unlike step one, there is no single textbook or a material like the first aid which you can use for step two. Now, this is one of the issues uh, with the step two CK preparation as well. A lot of the students often struggle with finding the right resource for step 2 CK and my general advice is that you have to stick with one or two of the Q banks. I would personally prefer everyone to stick with one Q bank, either the U world or Ambos. Now I have tried both of these resources and I have to say that both of these resources are really really good. You can choose either of these but you definitely have to stick with one resource. Trying to move from one resource to another or overdoing a lot of resources, uh, especially in step two CK, it will backfire because the content that is tested on step two CK is really, really huge. It is very difficult to review all of those material uh, during a dedicated uh, period before the examination. Coming to UWorld, uh, UWorld was my primary resource. I used and sold a single pass of UWorld. There was around 4,100 questions, which uh, if you could do one or two blocks a day, you could understand that it will take around 100 days to complete. My personal strategy was that since I was preparing for step one and step two together, during my first month, I did one block of uh, UWorld. And you have to understand that unlike for step one where UWorld is used both as a learning material and as a testing material, for step two CK, since there are no standard textbooks or materials which you can use, you have to use UWorld as a learning tool. This is really, really important. Because a lot of time people get disappointed uh, by looking at their UWorld scores when it drops down and they feel like they are not ready for step two. 
what we have to understand is that instead of solely seeing your world as a question bank use it as a learning tool you have to go through the answers you have to go through all the options you have to go through the incorrects of your world and you have to make notes of those material personally what i did was for the initial 30% of the content i would take uh, a system and do one block of it a block of 40 questions for example i would start with cardio do 40 questions then i would do hematology do 40 questions and so on and in such manner i completed around 20 to 30 percentage of the u world and once i was done with 30 percentage of u world i started moving into either the random mode or i would probably take two or three systems together and do a single block of 40 questions you have the tutor mode and you have the timed mode because for me time was not an issue uh, while solving the questions the issue that I had was always a lack of knowledge or a lack of test taking skills. So because I did not suffer much from uh, time constraints or time limitations, I did not do timed mode. I used to do tutor mode because that I felt was better. The good thing about tutor mode is that you can review the questions immediately itself. Because sometimes after doing 40 questions, you are tired and you just want to take a break. And once you take a break, it's uh, there is a possibility that you may not review the questions. You have to understand that reviewing the UL questions are going to be like your primary material. Therefore, do not do the QBanks without having any plans to review them. You have to review your UL or Ambos QBank, whichever you are using. The second resource which I would like to speak about is CMS Forms. Now, CMS Forms refers to Clinical Mastery Shell Forms. They are a series of 50 questions and they are divided into eight different subjects, medicine, surgery, gynecology, pediatrics, and four other subjects. Therefore, to get an idea about how the NBME thinks, it's good to start with a few CMS forms uh, while transitioning from the U world into the NBMEs. There are eight forms for each subject and there are eight subjects. So in total, there are 64 forms. Now, I definitely don't recommend doing all of those forms, but I personally did two forms for the major subjects, which is medicine, surgery, pediatrics and obstetric, uh, obstetrics and gynecology. And in addition to that, I did one or two forms for neurology, family medicine and psychiatry. I did not do any forms for emergency medicine. So in a nutshell, I did about 13 to 15 CMS forms, I would say. I personally felt that the questions were easier than the NBMEs, but they are definitely worth doing because you will understand that the question pattern is different from the UL type of uh, questions which we are used to. Coming to the third resource, which is the NBME self-assessment forms. Now, these are really, really important for your preparation due to two reasons. One, the NBME conducts the actual step two examination, like I mentioned before. Secondly, the self-assessment uh, gives you scores. So you have the scores which you get with these NBMEs, which are kind of reflective even though i personally felt that the actual step 2 ck scores do differ a lot from the nbmes but you could say that somehow for most people they fall in the same uh, ballpark so you have to start your nbmes preferably by four to six weeks before your actual step 2 ck examination that is what i did there are six forms and it's around 1200 questions so now you can see there is 4100 questions for u world there is another 1200 questions from the uh, nbmes and probably another 500 to 1000 questions from the cms forms depending on how much you do what is also important about the nbmes is that you will realize that the type of questions and the thinking that nbme wants you to do is different from the U world. And when you start with NBMEs, initially, I personally felt that the questions were really, really hard. I was scoring about 75 percentage on the U world Q banks, which is a pretty good score. I would get uh, around three out of four questions, right? That's what 75 percentage means, right? But when I started the NBMEs initially, uh, it was really hard. 
I felt like either the question stems weren't too long or they didn't have much information unlike the Yuval style or I felt that some of the answer choices were really vague and you will also realize that sometimes the answer options are different in U world and NBME for the same question and they also sometimes put some buzzwords which uh, in divine intervention divine speaks about this as well which could confuse you for example i had one of these questions in NBMEs where it was about a typical question of pulmonary embolism and in the answer choices there were two different options there was pulmonary angiography there was spiral ct now since we are so used to choosing ct pulmonary angiography as an option i was basically confused and i chose pulmonary angiography but later i realized it was a mistake and the actual answer was spiral ct so there are a few buzzwords there are a few like uh, differences in the thinking between NBME and U world and you have to get used to it it is initially scary but as time passes on as your forms uh, as you do more forms you will get used to the system the final resource which i definitely recommend is ambos now you have to understand that if you are not using u world or if you require an alternative for u world then i would definitely suggest ambos now ambos is amazing at so many levels and i personally feel that over the years ambos material will be more popular and could probably even surpass U world as the primary material for step 2 CK. The good thing about AMBOS is that unlike U world which is a Q bank, AMBOS in addition to that has a library. Now this library can be used as a primary material if you're learning the material or content for step 2 CK for the very first time. If I had a confusion about any topic, like for example, I had confusion regarding the management of acute appendicitis in different conditions, like when it's a child, when it's a mass, when it's an abscess during pregnancy. So what I did was I read the AMBOS articles. In addition to that, AMBOS also has this high yield feature and the key points feature, so which basically reduces the article and gives you only the high yield info which you need to know for the exam. So that is basically helpful. It saves a lot of time and it makes things more concise and clear. Another really, really important aspect of AMBOS is the high yield materials. There is high yield 200 question, there is 30 for 30 step two, there is high yield patient chart questions and there are, if you look through it, there are different sections separately which I personally feel was the most important resource I used and which benefited me the most during my Step 2 CK preparation because for my actual examination, there was a lot of material which was asked and tested from those high yield materials. I'll be getting into more of that further in the video. Coming to the pre-dedicated part, now as I reached uh, around 30 to 40 percentage of the U world, I personally felt that taking notes from U world was taking a lot of my time and I did not have a lot of time honestly to prepare for step 2 because I was studying for my step 1, step 2 and final year examinations and I was trying to do all of it in 6 months and I was also working as a full time research intern during that time. So my schedules were hectic and during that time I started to search for some pre-made notes on step 2 CK and in Reddit and on Telegram I came across this amazing notes by the inner circle uh, that is the step 2 CK inner circle notes. These notes I would say were a game changer in my preparation. So once I got these notes then I stopped actually taking notes further from the U world. You have to bear in mind that these notes per se are not like first aid where you can learn from these notes. You have to solve the U world because these notes are basically like a supplementary material to the U world. Once you're done with U world, when you go through these notes, you kind of get a grasp and understand the stuff. So during my pre-dedicated period, while I was doing my NBMEs, I was also going through a first pass of these notes. I personally did not do a second pass of UWorld 
because I feel like second passes uh, don't really help me. It doesn't align with my way of studying or thinking. I feel like I already know the answers when I'm doing a second pass. So rather than knowing why the answer is correct, it just comes on the back of my memory. So I did not do a second pass. I went through one pass of the inner circle nodes and the NBMEs during my pre-dedicated period. Now the dedicated period was the last three weeks of my preparation, which was perhaps one of the most crucial aspects of my preparation. So during this period, I went through another pass of the inner circle nodes. I also went through a second pass of the NBME questions. Now this is really, really important since NBME conducts the examinations. It is advised to do a second pass of the NBMEs because sometimes one or two questions may repeat in the actual exam and this did happen. This is also the time that I took the AMBOS high yield material. Now the high yield material which I took was uh, one was the high yield 200, 30 for 30 I did the AMBOS high yield articles and QBank on statistics. I did it on the ethics, uh, risk factors, screening and prevention, vaccination, quality. So these were the different materials which I did the QBank of AMBOS. I also did a second pass of these questions during those uh, three weeks. So basically in my dedicated three weeks, you could say that I was mostly doing the AMBOS high yield material. All in all, that was a total of 1000 questions. So in a nutshell, if I was to speak about my step to preparation, I did 4100 questions of uh, UWorld, 1200 questions of NBME, 1000 questions of AMBOS, and another 500 to 1000 questions. I don't have the exact number of uh, the CMS form. So in roughly, I did around 7000 to 7500 questions maybe. Now in the last week of my preparation, I took the free 120. I did the free 120s. I had a really good percentage. I scored in the 89 or 90 something percentage. I don't really remember, but I had really good percentage and I felt that the actual exam was really, really close to the free 120 in the pattern of questions and in the way they gave the answer choices. Another resource which people use for their step 2 preparation is one, the Anki. So I am personally not a big fan of Anki. It's not my way of learning. My way of uh, learning is by revising through the notes. I'm not a big fan of flashcards, but I did try the Zanki deck. The Zanki deck is uh, a deck of about 7000 cards. I went through that and that was already instilled uh, inside the inner circle notes which I mentioned. Another high yield resource which people do get a lot of benefit is from the Divine Intervention Podcast. Now on Reddit you will see a high yield list of uh, Divine Intervention Podcast. It's about 18 episodes. I personally listened to all of those episodes. And I definitely recommend it. I would say that if you want to watch all the Divine episodes, I definitely would recommend it. I have to give credit to Divine for the wonderful work that he has done because he has definitely made reviewing NBMEs really easy. Plus, I also felt that some of the episodes like the one on palliative medicine, transition of care, the ethics and legal stuff, all of those were definitely high. The one episode which helped me the most was the antibiotics. So it was episode 40, 41, 440. I guess that was the numbers. There were three episodes on antibiotics and I personally struggled a lot with the antibiotic questions. But those three were definitely uh, something which I reviewed on. The notes of these Divine Intervention podcasts are also available on his website. If you are not a podcast guy or a person, you can use those notes. So that's about the resources and the timeline which I prepared for my USMLE Step 2 CK examination. Now coming to the practice examination score. So basically there are nine practice examinations which you can take for your Step 2 CK and I personally took all of them you can see the scores here you can see most of my scores were in the 250s range but my actual score was 269 which is why i said that do not get too caught up on these nbme scores initially it will be hard what you have to look for is how the scores are improving so if your scores are really improving like it was in my case 
then you are on the safe side you probably will score good on your actual examination when it comes to the assessment of scores my score prediction in ambos as i put it down was 266 while my actual score was 269 I personally felt that the AMBO scores and the UWSA scores are going to be more predictive of your actual score than the NBMEs. So what was my strategy the day before the test? Well, the day before the test, I went through NBME diagrams. I personally felt that some of these diagrams do repeat on the actual exam. So I went through the NBME diagrams. I went through the AMBO's ethics articles and the quality articles. Uh, I went through the free 120 which I did the last one week so I would say that I did a second pass of 120 and since I did uh, free 120 just a week ago I remembered most of the material so it was basically just reviewing the questions once again that's all that I did and finally I had a few concepts here and there which uh, during my second pass through the inner circle notes I marked to review at the day before the test so i went through those material that was basically my preparation before the day and by the night time i prepared everything that i needed for the next day coming to the day of the examination i woke up around 5 5 30 and even though i slept around 10 the previous night i feel like i is probably fell asleep after 12 because i was laying in the bed with my eyes open for a large amount of time i i had this uh, issue that uh, why am i not sleeping uh, as i was lying in the bed i had concerns that i would be sleep deprived during the examination and i had that worry and that worry actually prevented me from sleeping so that's what happened but as i woke up due to the adrenaline rush of the day uh, i did not feel like i was sleep deprived thankfully the morning I had my breakfast, took a few snacks, mainly biscuits and chocolates. Even though it is advised to go with protein bars and stuff, I knew that I wouldn't have anything heavy. I just need some light snacks, one or two of them which I would uh, take during my breaks. Because USMLE Step 2 CK is a 9 hour long examination. You are going to have 8 1 hour blocks and you are going to have a break time of 1 hour. As the examination began, my first blog was really pretty straightforward. It had lots of ethics and it had lots of quality questions. That was what I personally felt. But I personally did have a good sense during the examination. I really felt that I was doing the exam well. Uh, the exam actually felt much easier than the NBMEs and the UWSAs. Like I said, it felt really close to the free 120s. So I took a break. Uh, after every two blocks I would go for a toilet break there were two blocks with drug ads and the drug ad questions it's a set of three questions you really have to take care about the drug ads because it takes time to do those questions it took around seven to eight minutes to do those questions but all in all I would say that on an average I used to complete a block within 45 minutes and I would have 10 to 15 minutes to spare where I would go through either the marked questions or I would just go through all the questions once again. And on an average I used to mark between anywhere between 6 to 10 questions a block and out of those 6 I would say there were around 4 to 5 questions which I had no clue during the examination. But I felt like those might be experimental questions so I did not bother much about those questions and I just moved on. Which is really important when you are taking your step 2 examination. If you feel like you have never encountered this question before, don't waste your time thinking those questions. Just choose the answer which you feel is closest to the correct one and just move on. So that's basically it about the step 2 CK preparation, my strategy, my timeline and exam experience. Uh, one thing which I forgot to point out is that one, uh, during my three weeks of dedicated, I did go through certain parts of first aid step one, which was the part about acidosis uh, and alkalosis in the renal. I went through uh, most of the drugs and their side effects, their interactions. Uh, which are routinely asked on step 2. I also went through the bio stats uh, of step 1. 
If you are on the USMLE journey and require membership for your step 1 and step 2, do sign up on the forms given in the description. That's it for this video. Follow me for more such USMLE content. Do hit the subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.